So in a recent career guidance and mentoring session with one of our students and subscriber, she has done plus two in India and she wants to do to know whether she should be doing a bachelor's and master's degree in India versus a bachelor's and master's de degree abroad. What are the benefits, opportunities and challenges which she'll, she'll face? So I thought, okay, why not make this as a video for all of you because of course this question will come up in everybody's mind. I'm making this video because um, this is not just an opportunity problem. This is a big financial drain on your parents' money if you are not aware of the gaps, the uh, traps, and of course, uh, the loopholes as well as opportunities which you can grab, okay? Now, first things first, the bottom line here is please don't go abroad if your parents cannot support you or if you don't have a scholarship, okay? So either you should have a scholarship or your parents should be able to financially support you because what cost in, the, in India 10 rupees will cost you 100 rupees there and then you will bleed money like anything. So please be careful about that. Okay. Now coming to the fact that research facilities abroad no doubt is better than India. But can you get that in India? Yes. Top not notch institutions such as IITs, IISC, top private institutions such as SRM, Amity, Mount Carmel College, various other um, colleges such as Manipal, Institute of Regenerative Medicine, all these are well equipped and are at par at the global counterparts. So if you can't go there, there are many colleges in India where you can pursue your education. But yes, the research infrastructure, the research facilities is 100 times better than what India has today. Now coming to the second part, which is funding opportunity. So it's not about only bachelor's and master's. You get funding easily there for your research career. And that is something very less people know about. So if in case you want to pursue your PhD or postdoc also, abroad will give you better opportunities because there are more companies over there, more funding is available. And that means because biotech runs on funding. In fact, in any industry runs on funding. So more opportunities for funding is available only abroad, not in India at this juncture as I, as I speak to you in 2024. So yeah, that is an unfair advantage you get when you go abroad. But when it comes to career prospects, if you are a top candidate in India, you will get the same career prospects whether you go abroad. So if you even if you do your uh, you know, PhD or MSc or bachelor's in, from the top institutions, You'll get the same career opportunities what you'll get abroad. So it's not like if you do it here, it's bad, okay? But you have to target the best ones. Now, followed by that, the networking opportunities are brilliant abroad, but the same can be, you You know, you, virtually you can reach out to people. So yeah, in India also you can do, so it's not that you have an unfair advantage uh, networking wise, but the quality of education there definitely is very high, very good. But please don't go into a less known private college just because you wanted to do a, your bachelor's or master's from uh, US or uh, European countries, do it from a good quality college. Now coming to the dark side or uh, the bad side or rather I would say the tough side of um, education abroad, bachelor's or master's in biotech abroad, you have agreed great infrastructure, great uh, scientists and mentors, but cost of living there will be 100 times more than what is in India. So please consider that. In fact, I'm going to tell you a shortcut now. Instead of doing bachelor's and master's abroad, I would suggest that you do bachelor's, master's and PhD in India and then go there. You can easily get absorbed if you have done a good PhD from India. Even you can get a green card also. So the struggle gets minimized by one tenth. Okay, so the struggle is now one tenth of what you would struggle in US or European countries. And then after your PhD, when you apply there, you become a you apply for a job, not for a degree. They won't ask you for any ILTS. They won't ask you for any um, TOEFL. And you directly get a job, right, as a scientist. So that's a better idea instead of going there and spending so much money. But yes, definitely if you, are, you want to have a lifestyle there, okay, you can do that. But remember, once you are there, it, there are very less people who come back. So yeah, that's there. Next thing is language barrier and time zone barrier. Language barrier is where you have different languages there, which, but your language may be English or Hindi, which are uh, native language uh, in South, such as Kannada or Malayalam or Tamil or Telugu, but there you will not, you may not find such people, right? So 
Uh, there will be French, there will be Spanish, there will be, you know, various other languages. So you have to keep that in mind. The time zone barrier will be, if your parents are in India and you are there, you have to really wait for them to wake up and you have to be in that overlap zone when, so basically you'll be talking to your mom dad only in the mornings, early mornings or late evenings, but not in the daytime or, so your near and dear ones won't be that near, near and dear with you. So that's a time zone uh, problem you'll face. Cultural adjustments will be there. The way things are in India are not the way things are in US or Europe. Things change. You may appreciate that it is much better, but at some point in time, that real Indian culture you may miss. The colorful festivals and all that, you may miss that. Now, coming to the bottom line is three things. First, don't jump in unless you have a scholarship. Okay, and that too from a good college or university. Second, don't jump in if you don't have the scholarship, but you have supporting parents. If they can afford your education, then only go. Third, there is no need to go if you just do your bachelor's, master's and PhD from a good college in India. You can apply for a job abroad and you can always go. So these were my thoughts about uh, bachelor's and master's in biotech abroad. Now. Here is a shortcut if you really want to get in there in top notch colleges. And that is, if you learn bioinformatics now, publish some papers in bioinformatics while you're still in your plus two or bachelor's. And then you apply, you mention this in your statement of purpose, your chances of selection will be very high in biotech and bioinformatics courses. Same thing you can do with biomedical, do some projects and then you apply there your chances of acceptance will be very high along with a scholarship. So you have to keep these, this in mind while you prepare your scholarship statement of purpose. But yes, this video doesn't end here. If you have any questions, if you want some guidance, you can always opt for personalized career guidance with me or many, any of my team members at Biotechnica. Uh, we call it as Career Guidance Mentoring Session, CGMP. So you can always reach out to us at 1-800-1200-1858 or you can write to me personally at shikhar at biotechnica.org. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you soon in the next one. Till then, keep shining. Bye-bye.